Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Linode. In today's video, we're going to check out configuration profiles, which actually help you determine how your Linode instance will boot up. For example, which kernel will be used and some other options as well. So configuration profiles will definitely help you out, and we're going to check it out in this video, and I'll tell you all about it. In fact, let's go ahead and dive in right now. First of all, what exactly is a configuration profile? Essentially, a configuration profile on Linode's platform acts as a sort of boot manager, and it allows you to customize the boot settings for your Linode instance. And specifically, what that allows you to do is to do things such as configure boot settings, choose which disk the instance will boot from if you have more than one, determine which kernel the instance will use when it boots up, as well as which network interfaces are available on that instance. But where exactly do you manage configuration profiles? Well, right here in the dashboard, actually. So I have this server right here that I cleverly named new server. So I'll click on that instance, but it really doesn't matter which one I click on because this is a feature that's available for every instance. And we have a configurations tab right here. So if I click on that, we can actually choose some of the options for this particular instance. And right here, we actually have a configuration profile that was created with this instance. So you'll always have at least one configuration profile, and you could create a new one by clicking Add Configuration right here. So let's check out the one that we already have. I'll click Edit. And we have some options here, and among them, we have the label. So if we want to rename the configuration profile, we can do that. We can also store some comments here that will help other people understand what this particular configuration is for. If you have any information that you think is pertinent to this particular boot config, then you can put your notes right in there. Moving on, we have virtual machine mode, and I don't actually recommend that you customize this unless you have a very good reason to do so, depending on the option that actually controls whether or not block storage is available, among other things. So again, if you don't have any other reason to edit the VM mode, then I would leave it at the default of para virtualization. Moving on, we can actually select a kernel, so right here we see the current kernel that I'm going to be booting from. It's Linux kernel 5.16.3. And if I scroll down, if I have any other kernels available, then I'll be able to select them from this list. And a good example of why you might want to do this is if there's a bug in the kernel that you're using and maybe there's some sort of problem starting up, then what you could do is start up from a previous kernel image. Now that's not something I've personally ran into, but if that does happen, well, you have options but I'm going to leave this at the default. But again, if I wanted to choose something else or boot to a different kernel, then I could certainly do that. We can also choose the run level. For example, we can log into single user mode. That might be helpful for recovery. We can also log directly into bash if you need to do so. We can also limit the amount of memory that the instance uses. Then you could also assign block devices. There's definitely a lot of options that this will allow you to configure right here in the dashboard. And in the article, we have even more examples of some of the things that you can customize. Now, another thing we could do is determine which configuration profile, if you have more than one, was used to boot a particular instance. And we could find that out from the activity feed right here. And as you can see, my profile is called My Custom Server Profile. So that's the one that was used when I booted up this instance most recently. So if you're curious how to know which one was used, well, there you go. Back to the configurations tab, what I'm going to do is create a new configuration. I'll just call it custom config. And for the comment, I'll write this is a custom config. If this is actually a production server, then of course you'd want to include some more relevant details in here in the comments field. But I think that's good enough for this example. I'm going to leave para virtualization alone. And for the kernel, what I'm going to do is just change it to a previous kernel. So I'll just change it to this one right here. I'm not going to limit the RAM. And for fun, I'll just boot into single user mode. And I'll choose the block devices here. So I'll choose the custom disk. And then swap. And the root device is going to be slash dev slash SDA. And I'll leave all these other options alone and I'll add the configuration. And now what I'll do is power off the server, and then I'll give that a moment to shut down, and then we'll try out the config. 
Okay, so now the instance is offline. And what I'm going to do is boot it from the custom config profile that we just created. I'll click boot right here. Go ahead and boot it. And then what I'll do is open up the Lish console just so I can keep an eye on the process. And I'll let it set on this screen and then we'll let it boot up. And it looks like the shutdown wasn't completely finished, but it is now. So any second now, it should start back up. So I'll give the root password for maintenance right here. I'll just type that in. And as you can see, I am now in single user mode. I'm logged into root. So if I needed to recover something from the server, I can do so. But I was able to customize the configuration profile, as you can see, and set some custom options for this particular instance. Again, check out the article that accompanies this particular video for even more examples of what you can customize with a custom config profile. Hopefully that helped you guys out. So there you go. As you just saw, configuration profiles enable you to customize how your instance boots up, which is very useful. There's all kinds of things that you can configure, and you saw some of those options in this video. Let me know what you thought of this particular video in the comments down below. I look forward to reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I'll see you in the next video because I have some additional content coming very soon for this channel. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.